Hello, my friends. It is a late morning here in Maine on a Friday, and today is a content production machine day. I have so much on my plate. I don't think I've been this busy maybe in my entire career at Blurb, believe it or not. I think we're definitely back to the 2018 pre-pandemic levels of uh, projects up in the air, deliverables. I'm looking at my calendar and the breaks that I used to have over the past couple of years are really non-existent and I can't imagine that changing anytime soon, but I think probably that's a good thing. It's a PNP sound machine. That's what I'm recording to. And that sounds always like reminds me of Gloria Estefan and the sound machine. So I don't know why I make that correlation. It has nothing to do with this film, but it's the kind of thing that goes through my head, people. And as you know, many things go through my head. I'm recording while my wife and her uncle are out of the house. You probably hear some fans in the background. Summer has definitely arrived here in Maine. Humidity has arrived, and there's a little dog in the other room, which is probably going to start barking at some point in this. So let's get to this. This is a notes on photography episode. And it revolves around an image that I made in Sicily back around the turn of the century. This was in early 2000s. And to give you a little backstory here, this was made with the Leica and film, T-Max 3200. And this was back during a time, there was probably about a 12-year period where my primary camera and, and capture system, if you will, was, was two Leica rangefinders, a 35 and a 50 and T-Max 3200. That was kind of my thing. I shot T-Max 3200 at all times of day in all kinds of lighting. It didn't matter if it was 12 noon or 12 midnight. I just got so used to using that system and I could use that film in so many different ways. It was very chameleon-like film from 800 to 6400 typically. Most of the time, however, I would rate it at about 1200 and process it normal to try to save on push processing fees at the lab. And that was kind of a good sweet spot for that film. I think that's the actual true film speed of T-Max 3200 is 1250. It's not 3200. It's nowhere near that. That is a film designed to be pushed, and um, it's chameleon-like, and if you throw in the range of developer and range of developing technique, it's really a film that's almost endless in possibilities. Love this film. Still have tons of it and may shoot some more of it at some point in my life, but as of today, not happening, and uh, I don't even have any film cameras with me because the logistics just do not work for my job. And I finally, after... I don't know. How many years has it been since 1997? That's the f- 1997 was the first year I shot a, an assignment with a digital camera. And I finally like digital all these years later. So anyway, who to thunk it? This is a picture made in, uh, in Sicily. It was a long-term project that I've done. I think I've shared a little bit of this work. Uh, I sold a lot of prints from this, this work over the years and was approached by two different book publishers to do books of this work. I said no. To both of them, they were terrible financial deals and what I would call predatory publishing, which is now rampant in the industry. It was really starting to build back when I did this, and I didn't consider it that way at the time because I didn't know that much about publishing. But basically, they were fishing lots of tens of thousands up front to get very mysterious books with mysterious marketing and mysterious distribution. And I'm not exactly the sharpest business knife in the drawer, and I could tell from outer space that these were bad deals. But this is an image, and this project in particular at Sicily was a project where you had to be prepared to shoot 24 hours a day. A lot of this was made in the middle of the night, which is when this image was made. We would often sleep in the car for a few hours and then get up and shoot and go back and sleep in the car and get up and shoot and go back and sleep in the car. And a lot of this was made with the Leica lenses wide open, you know, at F2, and you would be bouncing between an eighth, a quarter, and a half a second because it was pitch black and dark, but there was always drama. And what I'm looking for in an image like this and in a scene like this as I'm walking through the scene is I'm looking for, in painter's terms, the chiaroscuro, the light and dark. I'm just looking for subtle moments of light painting different aspects. Now, I got fortunate here because of the massive set of sparks coming off the wall behind this procession. And what these guys are doing, these gentlemen in the foreground are carrying a station of the cross, and they will carry this all night through the streets of this small town. And right as they were leaving the church, I didn't know this was going to happen. I didn't know the, uh, the, the, the sparks and fireworks were going to be coming off the wall. This was not a common occurrence at these religious processions. Fireworks were just not something I was expecting. So I had framed this up. I framed vertical because of the cylindrical shape of the human body is vertical itself. The vertical palm, that North African palm in the background, 
and the vertical aspects of the walls and also the pillars of light at the top of this, all of those lend themselves to vertical aspect ratio. And so I do have horizontals of this, but I prefer the vertical. There's just enough shadow detail. So I've got cylinders down here, cylindrical shape. Let me redo that. This is sort of a cylinder shape here, these human bodies. I've got the cylinder in the tree back here. I've got the cylinders up here of the light, and I've got a cylinder shape over here to the building on the left. That's why I, I, I chose to do vertical. This back here, all of this firework stuff was not expected at all. Um, and what I would say is I've got my foreground, obviously, I've got my midground here, and then technically I've got a little bit of a background with this stuff going here. It's not the most layered image, so not a lot I can do about it at the time, but the church itself that they're coming out of was over here. So they had just walked out, and I had sort of planted myself here because I knew I wanted to shoot in this direction. And there was, even though this fireworks had not started to go off yet, there was still light in the background, and I wanted these guys to be backlit. And the Station of the Cross is up this way. It's, it's towering above these guys. These stations are huge, and they carry it for penance. They put their time in hours and hours and hours as a form of penance as they're carrying this through. And each town in Sicily has a different flavor. You've got Moorish, you've got Albanian, you've got um, Moroccan, you've got all kinds of residues. You even have a village that celebrates American Easter. So it's a very amazing mix of uh, people and things. And again, there's just enough shadow detail in here where you can see detail on the faces. Frankly, I don't even really care about that. Uh, and if this goes dark, I don't care. If this goes dark, I don't care. It's really just about, an, I would say, the overall feel of this right here. It sets a mood. It sets a tone. I think this is one of probably, I think I shot four years on this project. I think I culled to 50 images, 5-0, and within the 5-0, there are sort of two different bodies of work that an editor pointed out to me that I actually didn't see. An editor looked at this work and immediately identified there were sort of two different stylistic versions of this work, which I hadn't seen because I was too close to the work, and I, couldn't, I just couldn't see it that way. But then when they pointed it out, it was very glaring and obvious. This image represents one style of photograph that I made there. And from this one style within that set of 50 images overall, there are probably 20 images total from four years that I think were successful. In fact, I know they're successful. I think it is a really solid group, group a body of work. And by the way, when's the last time you heard me say something serious about my own work being good? Um, I would typically never do that. I think that's something that other people assign. People who are actually skilled in photography are going to assign and let you know if this work is solid or not. I think that's obnoxious for most people to claim that they're great photographers, which seems to happen all the time now. It's kind of bizarre. But I think... Um, I'm pretty pretty sure this was a solid body of work. It was published many times. There were a gallery in Los Angeles represented the work. I did sell prints. Uh, so I think, you know, there was some, some positivity that came out of it. For me, frankly, it's just about the experience of making the pictures. That's why I'm a photographer in the first place or why I was a photographer is that I want to be in the field. I want to go to Sicily. I want to see this, hear it, smell it, experience it, and move on and do something else. So that is why I think this is um, successful. I think, number one, we had layering, the foreground, midground, and background. Number two, I got lucky with the fireworks in the back. I think, number three, there is quite a sense of mood here. And I do love how this last gentleman is sort of isolated off the end. I do like that. Um, technically, if I was going to nitpick this picture, I could have I shot one degree more in this so that this image was framed like here maybe a little bit less open space here on the right hand side if i was going to nitpick but still overall i think it was a decent frame so that is whatever this is notes on photography no idea the episode number i'm not that together got way too many things on my plate i hope that was interesting uh remember this photography thing is not about the equipment it's not about your software it's not about your, your, how many likes you get. It's not about any of that. It's about being in the field and making work, period. Making work. And by the way, just to rub everybody the wrong way at the end of this film, this is my style of photograph. It took me 10 years to figure out this is who I am with a camera in my hand. I studied photojournalism. 
they made us shoot four by five. I shot color transparency. I shot color negative. I did portraits. I did all different kinds of photography. I worked for newspapers for five years. I did editorial freelance. I quit photography, got a job at Kodak, shot my own projects for four years. And it was at the end of that fourth year at Kodak after quitting photography the first time and having worked full time as a photographer for over a decade that I finally figured it out. I finally realized, oh, I'm a 35 long form doc photographer, preferably black and white. That's who I am. Uh, and also parallel simultaneously came to the conclusion that guess what? There's no market for this in the U.S. You know, the U.S. wants Kardashians. They don't want this, right? So I realized simultaneously who I was and the fact that I was going to be unwanted. I was going to be the last kid picked for kickball every single time I took this work into editorial offices or agents or editors or art buyers. The art side of things was interested. The editorial, the business, the industry side of reportage or documentary photography or journalism, they were not interested at all. It just was quick hits already. This was going back into the early 2000s, and people were not that interested in this. So anyway, thought I would share. Hope you're well. We'll be back with more.